and it became you know sort of my my quest in life to go out there and show people about their gifts and show people about their abilities um which right. for some people that you know that's not something that they are gravitationally pulled towards uh but i believe that it is something that you know has at least parts that would be helpful to every single person on this earth to know a little bit about their own intuition uh inherent to their soul and their abilities So very first tip, most important one of all, is do not underestimate what you're already able to do. So for me, as far as anyone out there right now, you already have the ability to perform mediumship. You just do. There's going to be some people that naturally gravitate towards it more strongly than others, but every okay. single person uh, is capable of doing that right at this moment. And it's literally a matter of different types of relaxation to let yourself you know, into that place and then identifying whatever mental and emotional blocks are currently in the way, essentially. Because once you've identified them, some of them are very simple. Some, some emotional and mental blocks are just simply, I can't do it, right? That one's very simple. Right. Like It's a, just a matter of, of giving it a shot and trying it out. Also, validating your experiences um, in, a, in, in a healthy way. So of course, we all know not to assume that everything that we do is, uh, is some sort of, uh, some sort of magic necessarily, but at the same time, skepticism has to be healthy as well. So if we, if we intuitively know something and then we're validated on that, and then we try and find ways to discredit our own experience and just write it off as a coincidence, we might accidentally be dampening the power that was trying to come through and trying to show itself through that experience. So I would say, first of all, mediumship, intuition, energy work, all of these things are currently available right at this moment. So do you feel like some people are more inclined, like have a, um, a, a gift? Um, or is it basically just across the board, everybody has that talent and it's just a matter of tapping into it? Yeah, I, to me, it's the, it's the same as, you know, uh, there's some people who naturally have very strong hand-eye coordination, even though uh, anyone can, you know, learn that or get better with it. There's uh, some people naturally very connected to the rhythm, uh, naturally very connected to, you know, someone with a high spatial IQ, you might be born that way, but okay. there's things that you can do, practices and exercises and uh, different ways of, of looking at things where you can tap into that as well. So yeah, I think, I think nine times out of 10, the people that are born with the gift are really just the people who naturally were, were sort of compelled in that direction. And there's even some things that you might like start to notice that are commonalities, like people who are born with the gift are really just people who are naturally very strong in that direction. And they just so happen to often usually have high sensitivity. They, they tend to be really high in openness. They tend to be uh, artistic or creative. And so there's, there's a few things that you'll start to notice where you almost might even be able to build a template for what is, you know, referred to as like the archetypal psychic character or the high priestess character. And so it's something that anyone can do. But the thing is, to me, you take someone who's very pragmatic, someone who let's just say in astrology, they are maybe a Virgo sun, Virgo moon, Virgo rising, um, and they've got a few other earth placements as well. And so they're going to be high in pragmatism, high in skepticism. They're going to be someone who really tries to look at just what is proven, what is, you know, what is here, what is in the material. And that's a strength right. too. But being it for them to understand their intuition is an invaluable combination. And I don't think that they have a deficit of the psychic gift. They merely have uh, a mindset that works very well in the conscious and relies a little bit less on sort of drawing from that subconscious energy. But, uh, but yeah, no one is without, in my opinion. Wow. I've seen skeptics accidentally prove their own psychic ability on accident and then say, oh, well, that's not psychic. I just guessed it. And it's like where there is consistency in these guesses, you know, we have to look at what's coincidental, like likely to be coincidental, and what starts to become improbable. And then that improbability starts to become anomalous. And, you know, we, of course, can't rely on anecdotal evidence to prove something. You can't prove the psychic gift through a measurement of the amount of times that you do something correctly within shows or proves that. At the same time, though, we have to be able to be realistic about if you have coincidences that are happening on a consistent basis, isn't that anomalous? And isn't that something that has to be looked at? And do we maybe just need to find another system of measurement in order to, to look at this?
Because to me, the psychic gift doesn't operate in the zeros and ones and in the binary, it sort of operates in between them. Sometimes it comes through in a, in a very you know, visible uh, vision. Sometimes it's a, a feeling or a claircognizance or it's a, you know, a series of emotions that clearly are coming from another source. Uh, you know, there's, there's so many different, different ways to see it manifest. Evolvinghumans.com, I'm pretty sure, is the group that had actually done a, a really interesting demonstration with energy healing where they had essentially had a woman who had had a shoulder injury in a temperature controlled room. So they let her acclimate to the room. Uh, they had basically a thermal scan that was going. So it was showing that, of course, there was red inflammation. And then she essentially had a guy behind her, not making eye contact with her, not psychosomatically saying anything to, to trigger you know, thoughts within her through the placebo effect, but just simply from a distance using energy healing. And he was just there for, and it was on a time lapse. It was about an hour worth of time, I'm sure, or more. But essentially you could see on the thermal scan, you could just see it you know, cooling down, cooling down until eventually that red had turned to a yellow and orange. Uh, uh, and then it was like a, a light yellow and then a green. And then it's, you wow. know, it was, to me, it's like, once again, the energy itself didn't get measured, you know, so, so technically speaking, it wasn't proven, but we clearly showed uh, with a thermal scan that, that the energy of one person can affect another person. It's a matter of time. And it just so happened, you know, before energy healing is proven, it's just a matter of time. This is not a question right. of if right. anymore. Um, I think a lot of people, of course, think of energy healing. They're like, oh, like faith healing, like where like a priest is, you know, sort of right. has you call the 1-800 number and then, you, you know, he puts his hand on a person's head and they just, you know, wake up or something. It's, it's not that. Um, this is really just something that we inherently have the ability to do, that we can connect to. We can just work with other people and do that. And, uh, you know, it's, it just so happens to be that as we're reaching so close to proving it, we're entering the age of Aquarius. Um, different astrologers have different dates of this, of course, but December 20th of 2020, uh, of December 21st of 2020 is the age of Aquarius movement to a lot of astrologers, myself included, which just so happens to be representative of the synthesis between science and spirituality coming together. And to me, wow. I'm already seeing yeah. tremors of that already out in the collective. I'm seeing headbands. Yeah. yeah. Headbands yeah. where it triggers meditation in hip hypnagogic states, so the creation of binaural beats. Um, and many other things that we're already starting to do where we are blending the lines between science and spirituality. And as someone who's a, you know, maybe you might say like an organic spiritual purist at heart who believes that human beings, this is all natural all the time. Even for me, who's a, maybe a little bit uncomfortable with some of this technology being involved in it, I recognize that, you know, it's just part of the evolution of mankind. And it's something that, you know, I want to, I don't, I don't naturally feel comfortable with it, but I recognize that it's happening. And so it'd be a good idea to get comfortable with it. And there's a lot of people out there that are you know, <laughs> right. wondering. To me, I, th to me, the thing is, it's very simple. As long as we recognize that we can reach this state without those things, that adding them in is not a problem. And of course, using science as a validation tool for spirituality, there's no harm in that. You know, All that does is validate the existence of some of these phenomena that currently are treated as just, you know, superstition. So uh, I, I look forward to it. I look forward to this change in the collective and I think it's already starting to show itself. So one, one exercise that I love to do with any new mentee or any client that I'm working with on a chart reading where we're trying to get to the bottom of what block is in their way in life. Why do they feel that they're constantly in this cycle going down and down over again is getting back into alignment with truth. And it seems pretty obvious, you know, being honest is a good thing, you know, uh, uh, who in this wide world doesn't feel like they try to be honest whenever they can. However, sometimes we are in a relationship that we know that we're not aligned with, or a friendship that we know is uh, misaligned, or a career path that we, you know, are, uh, fully understand is, is very toxic for us as far as the environment. And so one thing I love to tell people is, if you want to get in touch with your intuition, First thing you imagine is that, you know, I give you, you know, you, first of all, you just imagine the next 72 hours of your life. What most likely is probably going to happen over the next three days. You know, you'll probably go to work, talk to your spouse, uh, hang out with some friends. Maybe you'll go through this process in life. Now reimagine it after taking a few drops of truth serum, where for the next three days, you can't do anything except for tell the truth. 
the farther right. apart those two scenarios look, the more that you more things you identify are clearly out of alignment. So for instance, if you know that with the truth serum, you would go off on this long tangent with your spouse and say all the things that you wish you had been saying all these last few years, or you have this friend who you would just immediately start being honest with and saying, hey, I think that you know, you're crossing this boundary all the time. I think that this friendship itself is very uneven and I feel like I'm being used. If in the work environment you say like, this is not only against the contract that we signed, but this is something that I am doing more than I am being, you know, uh, more than I'm contractually obligated to do to a degree that's unhealthy. If you would go around saying all these different truths because of the truth serum, give yourself the opportunity to start doing that right now without it. If you start speaking the truth in these different areas, it seems irrelevant, but if you put yourself back into alignment, you will feel connected with the divine immediately. After speaking your truth, it's, I mean, human beings, no matter how much you want to argue about, let's say, uh, you know, moralistic nihilism versus uh, imperialism or any other philosophy on morals, we human beings know that when we're holding in a secret, it hurts. And we human beings sure. know that when we say the truth, it, it, it's, there's a physical release that we actually experience from confession. If we give ourselves that physical and spiritual release from confession, we'll be able to start speaking all of our truth, including the truth that doesn't come from necessarily our consciousness, but comes from the divine or a subconscious or whatever form you attribute the psychic gift from coming from. But the, the point is, if you just think of the next 72 hours and the next 72 hours after having taken truth serum, and you the more things that you find that are out of alignment, start correcting those things. Because if you start going through and correcting them immediately, you'll start to recognize who's really there for you in life. The thing is, anyone who's truly there for us will love us for our honesty. They'll love and respect us for our honesty. It's you know, not a harmful thing to use tact when speaking to people, but at the same time, honesty is honesty and it needs to be spoken. So that would be the one thing that seems so innocuous or so random, but the truth is I've seen direct psychic breakthroughs with my own life back in uh, June 1st of 2017, when I had a, uh, what I might call a, a serious reawakening with my gifts and have since then felt fully connected to my energy, connected to my intuition, connected to my abilities. All of it came from that very particular thing where I went around and I started speaking my truth, my real truth mm -hmm. to every single person in my life and no longer hiding who I was. And the irony is, not only did people not hate me for it, like I feared, but they actually finally were able to love me because they were able to see who I really was and get close to me. And I did lose a couple people, but I gained hundreds more. You know, like it, wow. I, I, a few people did fall out of my life from that, but it doesn't mean it's forever and it doesn't mean they'll never come back. And I don't right. have to wait around for that. I just have to be me and be honest. And you can too. You know, like it's, uh, I know it's scary, but it's the most powerful thing you could ever do to heal yourself as an action. I'm glad to have been connected with you. And of course, the reading that you gave me a week and a half or so ago was <laughs> absolutely fantastic. And I'm, I'm looking to see how that all that unfolds. But yeah. I know based on many of the things that have happened in the past and the things that you said have happened in the past, all of that seemed to be right on target. So I'm expecting moving forward will be the same. It's, um, it's still trippy for me. It's still, it still is uh, mind blowing each and every time to see the way that just our progressed sun shifting changes so much of what we're going through in life. But yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you. So that's the, that's all, that's dream. Uh, my YouTube channel is Jack's Atlantis. I've got about 40 videos there and uh, you know, I'm, I introduce, of course, live chats with other spiritualists where we have interviews and talk about the, the gifts that they use, their spiritual philosophies. Um, also, I'm about to create my first guided meditation on my, or actually my second guided meditation on my channel and have that on there as well. And I'm really excited to start that series. I'm going to be doing a tarot-based series of guided meditations to walk you through the major arcana and the, the sort of the quintessence of those tarot cards. Uh, and then of course I do live readings uh, each week called the Divine Trine Weekly Horoscope, where myself, the Peace Dealer, and Starry Ari, the Toltec Shaman, get together and do like a weekly forecast for people as well as some live readings. Uh, JaxAtlantis.com is my website. So of course that's where gonna be where you'll be able to find all of my stuff uh, from everywhere. 
Uh, and then of course, highvibe.tv, make sure and join and uh, check me out there if you want daily content of daily astrology for the collective, as well as daily tarot for each of the elements of the zodiac. So um, yeah, I've got a lot of different things going on right now, but one service that I'm very passionate about right now, I've been doing a lot of, would be uh, my clairvoyant astrology sessions, 60 minute sessions oh. where I focus on just looking over the upcoming year uh, so that you can, you know, so that we can go over times, predictions, and uh, see kind of what's coming up for your transits this year based on your particular astrology. So, you know, if you're an Aries versus a Cancer, you might have a lot of different things happening towards your career path, towards your relationships. And uh, now's definitely the time to, uh, to check that out. I've had that all on. 50% off since COVID started because there was a lot of businesses that have been affected by this, a lot of storefronts that have had to close right. down or do that. And so I've been trying to provide an extra 20 minutes uh, so that we can go over, uh, you know, career transits because you can treat treat uh, businesses the same way you treat a person, pull up its birthday and its, you know, birth time essentially uh, to go over how the business itself is evolving with the current astrology. So that's that's the thing that I really love the most. Thank you so much, Lauren, for having me on today. My name is Jax Atlantis, and you guys can all find me at jaxatlantis.com on High Vibe TV, and of course, on my YouTube channel, Jax Atlantis. Um, and very soon, I'm sure I'll be uh, here on Karma Hub as well, so make sure to check it out. Thank you, guys.